But I don't know. I, my testimony is I, sometimes I like wish I had a better. You ever do that? You wish you had a better testimony in your life. You're sitting in church and you're listening to a guy on stage like, man, he has an awesome testimony. I have a horrible one. I wish I was addicted to crack. Thanks, God. So I love that clip. It speaks to a lot of truth about, you know, different things about the way people view their testimony sometimes. Um, that's what I want to talk to you today about is testimony. Uh, I was thinking about Revelation 12, 11. It says, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Now, I understand that the people being addressed in this verse are those who are martyred for their faith. Uh, I also understand that by and large, most of us are not going to have to die to our faith, uh, die for our faith. Um, but it did get me thinking, what is the power of our testimony? And according to Revelation 12, 11, that verse, uh, it says that they understood, the martyrs, that they could overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So what is the power of our testimony? Uh, you know, and as a side, you might think that they didn't overcome and they didn't triumph over the devil because they were in heaven martyred for their faith. Uh, but Christians are never harmed by the second death. So all the devil did was send them home. Uh, so again, so what is the power of our, our testimony? Well, our testimony in Christ is extremely powerful. Uh, when we confess Jesus as Lord, we get the Holy Spirit. Uh, we get Christ in us, the hope of glory. We get seated at the right hand of God uh, in Christ. And we could go on. Um, but, you know, to put it in other ways, we could say we get everything. You could read Ephesians chapter 1 and see that. Uh, when you accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you become a new creation. There's nothing better than having Jesus. Uh, and I should know, because I have him. Uh, I know what my life was like before him. The power of your testimony is also inherently linked to the power of the gospel, because it's a testimony that the gospel is true. The power in your testimony comes not from your ability to save yourself. You're not speaking about how you're not testifying. Think of it that way as in a, a courtroom setting. You're not testifying of how you saved yourself. You are testifying that the gospel is true. So the power in your testimony comes not from your ability to save yourself, but that God saved you. Um, some people like to argue that Jesus didn't exist, uh, that he was just a good teacher, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, some like to say that um, God's a myth. Some like to say all, all sorts of things, really. Uh, and they can say all sorts of things. But one thing people can't do is taint your testimony. Somebody can't deny your testimony. It is your story about how God has saved you. It is your story about what God has done for you, in you, and through you. It is your story about the gospel being true. That's something people can't argue against. Um, and they can't take it away from you either. You're the only one who has your testimony. It's your testimony and you should share it. The testimony you have of the gospel is powerful because the gospel is powerful. Paul says in Romans 1.16 that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew and then the Greek. Most of us, most of you listening are probably Greek, you know, Gentiles. Um, it brings me to my next point is don't ever negate the power of your testimony either. Um, your testimony, whatever it might be, shows, us, shows how God has worked in your life. Uh, if you were a crack addict, murderer, cheat, porn star, self-hating, self-abuser, uh, or a faithful child of God who's never wandered far off the path, then that's your testimony. Don't think for a second that a testimony that is ripe with love towards God and how he has kept you um, is, a, is a horrible thing or a bad testimony. You know, I've met Christians who say, oh, I wish I had a testimony like yours. I, I'm glad you didn't. Uh, it's my testimony, yeah, but I, I like yours a lot better of how you accepted Christ at a young age and you've been obedient and you followed him and you've seen him bless you through your life and you've seen uh, what it is to walk with him and not have to struggle with these things. Um, that's a wonderful story and it is just as good, in my opinion, as a drug addict who saw Jesus when he was overdosing. Um, 
it's a great story because, you know, my prayer, our prayer for our youngest daughter is that she will have that kind of testimony, that she won't have to go through the things that I went through in order to see that God is good and loving and gracious and kind and all these things, that she won't have to live that life in order to see the way, see God the way I see him, that she will walk with him faithfully from this time on. Um, that's what I want for her, uh, is to be able to have that kind of testimony. And one way that she can have that is by people who have that testimony sharing it. If that's your story, if that's your testimony of Jesus and your testimony of God and your testimony of the power of the gospel, then share that and embrace it and let others know how good he is that way. Um, we each have a story to tell about Jesus. Some are G, P, G, R, some are X, but that's your story. Share it proudly because it testifies of how good God is and how he has kept you or saved you from a life of misery. You know, if people can't accept your testimony about how God saved you after uh, maybe a failed marriage, drug use, self-injury, attempt to suicide, um, don't worry about them. They might need to check their own testimony. You know, when I first got saved, I couldn't stop telling people about it. Um, I wanted to tell them so they could experience the same joy, life, and love that I now had. I remember my boss uh, worked at a construction site and he used to call me a holy roller. I had no idea what that meant, but he knew that I loved Jesus and he knew that I wanted him to love Jesus. He could see the power of the gospel in my life. I was a mess before Christ. I was on drugs, cutting, tried to kill myself. Um, you know, my story is a little bit different than most because it's my story about how I came to Christ. But you have yours and you should be sharing it. And you should share it because you want others to experience that same love that you have. I'll end just with this thought. Jesus is worth it. Whatever it is, he is worth it. That's just a thought.